the raven. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. To some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only to see nothing. More. Are we scared yet? Bard, he's establishing mood. Ah, distinctly I remember. It was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow. Vainly I had sought to borrow from my books a cease of sorrow. Hmm? Huh? Sorrow for the lost Lenore. Oh, Lenore. For the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore. Nameless here forevermore. <laughs> and the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. So that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis a visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. Yes, it is, and nothing more." Presently, my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is, I was tapping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door. <laughs> this better be good. Darkness there, and nothing more. Huh? You know what would have been scarier than nothing? What? Anything. Back into the chamber, turning, all my soul within me burning. Soon again, I heard a tapping, something louder than before. Surely, said I. Surely, that is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what there at is, and this mystery explore. Open here, I flung the shutter. When with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he. Not a minute stopped or stayed he. But with mien of lord or lady, perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of Pallas, just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. <laughs> Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou. I said. A journal craven, ghastly grim and ancient raven wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me, tell me what thy lordly name is on the nice Plutonian shore. Quoth the raven. Eat my shorts. Bart, stop it. He says never more, and that's all he'll ever say. Okay, okay. <laughs> Then methought the air grew denser, perfumed by some unseen scent. Stupid censure. Swung by seraphim, whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch! I cried. Thy God hath led thee, by these angels he hath sent thee. Respite and nepenthe from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, oh quaff this kind nepenthe and forget this lost Lenore. Quoth the raven. Nevermore. No! Oh! Be that word outside the parting, murder fiend! I shrieked up, starting. Get thee back into the tempest and the night Plutonian shore! No, leave no black plume as a token of the lie. Thy soul has spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart and take thy farm from off my door. Quoth the raven. Nevermore. Take thy beak from out my heart and take thy form from off my door, quoth the raven. Nevermore. Why, you little... Uh oh Come back here, you little raven! Sitting, still is sitting, still is sitting on the pallid bust of Pallas just above my chamber door, and his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming, and the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor, and my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. <laughs>